Hey guys, how's it going? This is Sam with the RG Reviews. Uh, today, I'm just doing a different kind of video. I'm showing a couple different concealed carry pieces that are out there. I'm going to talk to you about cost and uh, the different shapes and styles of concealed carry that are out there, the different options. And I'm bringing emphasis on cost because a lot of these pistols are not cheap, but there are some really good deals out there that you can find and use a con as a concealed pistol. Uh, concealed carry, I should say. Uh, just let you know ahead of time, I don't have my concealed carry permit yet. Uh, it's just haven't really had the time to uh, sit down and do the paperwork, going to school over the summer and working, uh, and I really haven't had the cash to uh, get my fingerprinting done and whatnot. But I will be getting that shortly in the next month or so. Uh, my my practice with concealed carry has just been limited to around the house, but you know when you when you wear wear one for a little bit around your house and you know you see how it feels sitting and moving and you know uh, walking around bending down that kind of thing, you know it, it is comparable to carrying it uh, every day and seeing how it wears on yourself. Personally, I'm a small of the back kind of guy, or if it's a revolver, it's in my front pocket. That's how comfortable it is for me. I'm also a larger guy, you know. Uh, but let's get down to talking about some of these guns. Uh, let's start off with the uh, Ruger SR9C. C for compact, of course. It's, I recently, this is one of the most recent pickups. All these guns, as you can see, are open. Uh, just so I can show you that they're clear. The revolvers aren't, of course, but this gun came in at around four hundred dollars even though the MSRP says five twenty five uh, I didn't know I don't know how they do the MSRP because I've sometimes I've seen them for way cheaper and sometimes I've seen them for a lot more but that's always kinda wacky looking that up uh, the magazines the uh, compact comes with a finger groove right there it's, it's a ten round mag and it also comes with a base plate that's just a flat one. What's really cool about these magazines is if you punch this, uh, if you take the base plate off here, there's actually a spring retaining uh, plate that fits inside the magazine. So you can take this off without the spring shooting out at all. Just slide it on, slide it off. It's, it's actually really cool and really easy. Uh, the full size grip holds 17 rounds. Uh, double stack mag, of course. And anything with double stack, you're going to be sacrificing a little bit of width compared to single stack. But in my opinion, I would much rather have a double stack magazine than a single stack just because of the capacity. You know, you almost double your, well, not almost double, but you get a few more rounds, uh, four to five more rounds. Uh, what I really like about this pistol for a concealed carry type gun is how slim it is. It's got your 1911 style slimness and the sights on it are really nice uh, as you can see sorry about this I'm working the camera by myself tonight it's really nice sights they, they stand a little tall but when, and at first it looks a little weird and once you start shooting it though I thought it was gonna be weird with the tall sights but I was pleasantly uh, pleasantly proven, proven wrong you know let's move on to uh, something a little cooler in my mind uh, it lacks what the SR9C has in magazine capacity and slimness this does lack magazine capacity and slimness but it's also a really 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 nice gun it's a CZ75 uh, P01 basically a compact version of the CZ75 this has a decocker whereas the uh, SR9 only has a, a safety. Yes, this doesn't have a safety, but this is also single action and double action, which is also a plus, whereas that's only single action. Uh, I prefer single action and double action pistols, but you know, sometimes the coolest pistols are either single action or just double. Uh, comes with 14 round magazines stock, but this pistol is also a lot larger than the SR9C if you look as uh, the length of the grip which if you can if you can only can carry concealed that will be an issue uh, because you can be showing your grip of the gun and that defeats the whole purpose of carrying concealed but like I said if you're a larger frame person or you a coat something like that you know you can definitely carry this 
This comes uh, came with a Crimson Trace grip on it, new out of the box from the factory. We got this uh, pistol for about six hundred and twenty-five dollars. It MR uh, MSRP is around six hundred. Uh, it's just real fun to shoot, and if you're a fan of the CZ-75, this is the perfect pistol to take that place for the compact, just because it, the action is just like it, uh, except for on the CZ-75B, this will be a uh, safety, and not a decocker. But the decocker is just sweet. It's just awesome. The trigger pull is also very nice. It's just real... It's not uh, it's not real stagey, not even on double action. Yeah. Got your drop it down mag, ambidextrous mag or no, actually not ambidextrous mag release. Sorry about that. Most CZ80 uh, most CZs have them. I just forgot which one I was handling, I guess. Uh, let's move on to another CZ. Probably one of the most cost effective guns on this table today. Uh, a matter of fact, I know it is. Um, the CZ82. Cool little pistol. I've already already done a review on this. Uh, I have not done reviews on the PO1 or the uh, SR9 yet, which will be coming soon. Uh, this CZ82 uh, cost about two hundred and fifteen dollars, I believe, and that was uh, over a year ago. Now I see them online for anywhere between one ninety and two ten. Uh, it's uh, calibered in the nine millimeter by eighteen. It's a Makarov, is what they call this round. The, the operation of this gun is simple, and the actual design of this gun is so far ahead of its time. Uh, you have ambidextrous mag release, and these were actually used uh, in a lot of European police forces in 1983. Uh, you have your, your ambidextrous mag release. It's a single action, double action pistol. It breaks down just by pulling uh, down the trigger guard, and it slides right off the top. If you want to watch my video and watch me do it uh, in the 82 review, you can, but I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, it's got really, really nice, thin upper sights. One of the most accurate pistols, uh, short pistols I've ever shot. To be honest, it's it's just amazing how accurate this is. You know, it's it's really, really light. It's really fun to shoot. The ammo does not cost an arm and a leg. Uh, but like I said, it's it's one of the most cost-effective pistols on the table, and that's why I decided to bring it in. Because it is short enough and small enough to use it as a concealed. I'll put it up against the uh, Ruger SR9. Look, the size difference, not that different. You have a little bit of a longer grip on this one, as you can see. Maybe less than an inch longer. And... What's pretty rocking about the CZ82 is that it comes stock with generally two 12-round magazines. Now, when you compare the 82 and the 9mm Luger or the uh, Makarov and 9mm Luger rounds, they're not actually that different. The casing is just a little bit smaller. Let me get casing's just a little bit smaller, as you can see. It's the actual length of the projectile and uh, powder. I guess in the uh, casing that makes a difference. Both are hollow points. People say that they're afraid to over penetrate with 9mm Luger. Use hollow points. You know, that's a pretty decent solution. Um, what's really cool about the 9mm Makarov is that it's a smaller, shorter round projectile than the actual 9mm Luger, which means is that when it hits, it's more uh, it's not as pointy. So it's not going to get the penetration power you get, so it's more of a stopper than it is to go through and penetrate, which I really like that about the 9mm Makarov, and that's something to take into consideration when deciding against 40 cal versus 9mm or 9mm versus 45. Uh, you can argue capacity versus capacity versus damage all day. Uh, and there's dudes that are on one side, there's dudes on, and that are on the other, and there's dudes that like to compromise and have, just have different things. Uh, put those back. Uh, I forgot to talk about the weight on the uh, CZ75 PO1. I just just remembered that. And yeah, I had to write down all the the facts because there's going over five guns at once. Uh, actually, six. That's how tired I am right now. I've been studying quite a bit lately. Uh, the CZ75 uh, comes in at 1.8 pounds, so it it is heavy. And it's longer than all of them. Uh, it's wider than all of them. So this one's going to be the low man on the totem pole for me as far as a concealed carry. Even though it is considered a compact, 
uh, CZ could probably do better by chopping down the grip, uh, thinning up the thinning up the gun. I mean, it's already pretty thin. Uh, that crimson trace is what does it for the width. It you know it kind of with the crimson trace on there, it kind of blasts it out of the water, out of the ballpark for these. But without it, I'm sure it's really slim. Uh, <coughs> sorry, I've also been a little sick. Uh, it comes in at. Uh, see 7.2 inches with a 3.8 barrel length and that's what I like about CZ because there's a little trend going on with them I guess the CZ 82 is also uh, is like six inches long and also has a 3.8 inch barrel which you know a little longer barrel than the SR 9c and definitely a longer barrel than the Springfield XD subcompact and definitely a longer barrel than these two revolvers here uh, so that's CZ has that going for him so when it what it lacks in uh, size and capacity it makes up for uh, in the barrel length the actual operation of the gun the safety features and the action of the gun uh, that's what I see it has working for it also the sights the sights are a not tritrium night sights but they are glow in the dark sights uh, for the evening which I've shot it uh, not uh, not with the lights out but close to dusk and they do start they do start working even when it's not completely dark out so that's a good job on that. Uh, let's move on to the Springfield XD. Oh, wait, let me do the uh, the uh, specifications on the 82 first before I try and go on to another one. Uh, this is my first review where I've done more than one gun at a time, really. Uh, so uh, this is kind of a learning experience for me. The CZ82, like I said, one of the cheapest guns in here. Uh, and by cheapest, I don't mean quality cheap, I mean inexpensive. That's what I should start saying. Uh, the most inexpensive gun on this table comes in around $200. Like I said, 12 round mag capacity, which is nice. The 9mm uh, Makarov, not made for the penetration, made for the stopping. Also a plus. Uh, it's short, it's sleek, it's easy to use, easy to break down. It doesn't, it does not, I've never really had a jam on it once or twice after some serious use and no cleaning. Uh, it's an all steel gun as well, so that's a plus. Uh, but that also drives the weight up. The weight is, comes in at 28, uh, 28 ounces unloaded. But, you know, uh, all around for $200, and if that's if you want to get it concealed, man, I, I would actually trust my life with this surplus pistol older than me. I would definitely trust my life with it because it works. I've shot the crap out of it. I shot. If not a thousand rounds, it could be two thousand rounds through it, and it just keeps pumping them out. Uh, now I'm going to move on to the Springfield XD. This is probably my favorite gun on the table. Uh, it was my first concealed carry piece, uh, and that's originally what we bought it for. And it's taken me a while to get my money uh, together for the concealed carry and whatnot in time. But what it has going for it is 13 round subcompact magazines flush fitting it's awesome that's that's three more rounds in the Ruger uh, SR9 that's one less round than the uh, CZ75 but it still beats it on uh, le grip length by like an inch to half an inch at least you put them up next to each other let me close this actually that's about an inch it has a beat on grip uh, but the full-size mag for the XD takes 16 rounds and that's why I like buying uh, subcompacts and compact guns because not only do they generally come with full-size magazines but now you have a dual-use pistol with a short barrel and that's the only difference you now have a pistol that has full-size capacity uh, opportunities and you also have a concealable carry pistol opportunity and which you know I think it's a major plus for the concealed market because you can use them as both uh, I was talking about the 9mm uh, Luger being an over penetrator I have I whenever that's this is my pretty much my desk gun my home defense go-to gun and I keep it loaded with 9mm hollow points because I live in a house with other people and you know I don't want to be shooting up my family trying to get the bad guy who breaks in and tries to hurt us uh, that's why I roll with 9 mil hollow points. Now I don't use the CZ82 as my desk gun only because I keep the 16 round magazine in my XD when I sleep. 
that's for in the home, the short one's for out. Uh, when I start carrying, of course. You know, and you just can't beat what XD gives you with their guns. They give you uh, a couple of mags. I got when when I bought this gun, and it MSRP's for around uh, 460, and that's pretty much what I got mine for. But now I'm pretty sure you can pick them up pretty uh, maybe 399, 400 because the new XDM series is out. Guys are switching them in. They're probably flooding through the pawn shops. Well, with these new guys buying the XDMs, but you know what? The XDs work just fine. The XDMs just beat it on mag capacity and weight, uh, I believe, and a couple of mechanical differences and magazine size differences. But other than that, this XD just keeps pumping. I've never had a jam, even in the break-in periods, and I'm not joking. I've said every single one of these pistols will eventually jam. Every single one of them will, uh, with respect to the revolvers not being a pistol. Uh, <clears throat> And I'm waiting for this one to jam. Like I said in my review, it hasn't yet. And I'm just, I know it will, but I'm just waiting for it. I keep it clean and nice. And, you know, maybe I should just let it dirty and see how long it takes it to jam. But the bad, the not the bad thing, the difference between this Ruger S, uh, SR9C and this Springfield XD subcompact is, are you wanting to carry a wider gun? This uh, has more of a blocky style width to it and bigger sights, whereas this SR9C has the slim 1911 style sights, uh, or 1911 style slide and uh, dovetail sights, you know. And all, this also has dovetail sights, but it's just a little fatter. Oh, sorry. Ugh, there we go. It's also just a little fatter, you know. It's a, uh, and you have to think about your body and your your build before you decide to buy a gun for a concealed. All of these are comfortable wearing on me. I made sure of that. Uh, I'm not gonna buy a gun that I can't wear comfortably because then I just basically wasted my money because I know I'm not gonna wear it, ever. Uh, this is a single, or a double action only, ugh, twisting my words up, single action only, sorry. Uh, you know, I've, I've put thousands of rounds through it and it just keeps pumping them through. Um, real easy to break down. I'm not going to break it down because I did in my video on the review. If you want to check it out, then watch it. It's got a three, uh, three inch barrel, which is pretty good. I'm pretty sure this has everything except for maybe the revolvers beat on length, and it comes pretty, pretty dang close for the revolvers. It's the shortest one here, which is why I like it too, because I can literally put that in a a pair of jeans uh, pocket, you know, like some baggy jeans or something, some cargo pants, put it in a pocket and roll, whereas I might not be able to do that with the length of the SR9, and I definitely won't be able to do that with the length of the CZ75, and I, I could probably do it with the 83, or 82. They also make 83s in that with 380 if you want to go to the 380 route instead of the uh, 9mm Makarov, same magazine capacity as well. <coughs> uh, the XD weighs 26 ounces. Uh, it's a little heavier than the SR9, but uh, and overall length is 6.2 inches. You know, uh, if you really decide that, you know, 0.2 inches matter, which in my mind it doesn't. Uh, the specifications are just for you guys, really. I don't. I see a pistol in the store pistol looks like it would work great for me I'll buy it I don't care the exact length the exact weight I don't get into ounces when I start shooting it's either full-sized or compact for me this one feels lighter than this one and you know you're also when you're dealing with weight you're also dealing with a recoil problem the lighter the gun the more the recoil generally uh, so you also have to take that into account when you're bringing in caliber. Uh, I used to have a 45 concealed uh, Taurus PT-145 Pro, and I actually got rid of it due to mechanical functions on the pistol that were was was unacceptable. And I just didn't, you know, it was a really cool gun. I like to shoot it. The trigger pull was a little weird. It was one of the lightest pistols I've ever owned, and it had a 10 round 45 magazine capacity. It's pretty awesome, but. You know, when you're arguing capacity and uh, recoil 
that kind of thing. That all just depends up to the shooter. This is just a video showing you guys what's out there. I'm a 9mm guy, to be honest. 9mm Makarov, 9mm, and 380 or 357. That's my style. Uh, I'm not opposed to carrying 45 or 40 cal. Those are some hardcore stoppers, and if you're willing to sacrifice capacity, then that's your that you know that's your prerogative. Uh, now I'm going to move on to the revolvers, which I think are uber cool. Uh, uh, I'll start off with the 38 Special here. Uh, I think any practical firearm owner, if they're going to build any type of collection, whether it be three guns, uh, a shotgun, a semi-auto pistol, and a revolver, I think they should all have. Uh, either a 357 that can take 38 specials or a 38 special along those lines just because these guns are so easy to use are so easy to maintain and they're the perfect concealed carry pistol in my mind with disregarding magazine capacity or I should say carry, concealed carry revolver uh, for, you, for all of those of you who do not know a pistol is not the same thing as a revolver a pistol is a semi-automatic uh, weapon whereas a revolver generally has five to eight shots uh, depending on what kind of revolver you're using uh, and has a cylinder uh, this right here is one of my favorite style of revolvers the J uh, J frame uh, shrouded hammer it's just got your bare bone sight you know uh, this thing is meant for a, an across the dinner table kind of thing you're not going to be picking dudes off at 40 yards let alone 40 feet is going to be pushing this uh, and believe me, I've shot this revolver a lot. Revolvers are not the easiest thing in the world to shoot. Compared to semi-automatic, it is a world of difference. You know, you have to... I actually had to reposition my body differently to shoot this specific revolver right here. I had to change the way I was standing. Uh, I could shoot all day with a semi-auto, all day long. But when it came to this, I had to change the way I was standing. Uh, so do not do not underestimate the complexity of a revolver you know it's really simple but you know don't don't think that you can just pick one up and shoot it a couple times and then be proficient with it you need to practice 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 and just because you're awesome with a semi-automatic does not mean you're awesome with a revolver and I learned that the hard way uh, I'm, I'm getting better I can get one and a half to two inch groups at about a let's say 25 feet 30 feet uh, but you know, with a pistol, I can get one-inch groups, no problem, at 25 feet, uh, 20 feet, 25 feet. Uh, I'll get into the specifics of this. Uh, what's mind-blowing is the weight. It's 15 ounces, by far the lightest gun on the table. Uh, barrel length, of course, they're going to be short. They're snub nose revolvers. They're, they come in around two inches, uh, just short of two inches, actually. Uh, Six-inch overall length. Which this gun I can literally stick in a gym pant, like some gym shorts pocket, and you really could not be able to tell that I had a revolver in there. And that's the awesome part of this. You, I mean, really, if you're wearing a decent pair of baggy jeans, not really baggy but loose fitting, you could slide this in your pocket without even having a holster. Now, I, I recommend getting it in the pocket holster for something like this. Uh, I, I personally, you know, I could just slip it in my pocket, I don't really mind. <clears throat> and with revolvers, they're generally five to eight shots, like I said, so you are sacrificing some capacity. But this is a 38 special round. It's a hollow point. Like I said, I hollow points all the way for a concealed carry. You don't want to be going through and hitting innocent bystanders if you ever have to use it. 38 plus P, it's a mean little round. Do not let anybody tell you that a 38 plus P is any less dangerous than a 9mm Luger or a 45, because they're lying. Uh, and don't let anybody tell you that a 9mm Makarov, or a 22 for that matter, is any less dangerous than any other round. All guns can pretty much kill you. Uh, everybody should know that. Uh, kind of got off subject there, sorry, a little rant. This costs around $450, and I believe my parents, this was actually my mom's revolver, she gave it to me uh, for my birthday. But uh, I actually believe they got this for around $425, uh, with no tax. Uh, I can double check on that, but I would, you know, the MSRPs are wacky, like I said earlier. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the Ruger LCR 357 Magnum. Now, I don't want to sound sexist, but I recommend the 38 Special for ladies, and this one 
for someone who can handle a kick. And I'm not saying ladies can't. If you're a male or female that can handle a kick, 357, roll with it. It's, you know, same capacity, same barrel length, more powerful round. Uh, or not more powerful, but, you know, it, it packs a punch. It's a, I believe the, the warhead, the casing is actually longer, uh, more powder, more uh, uh, comes out at a higher velocity. Uh, they're they're the same size cartridge though, so actually you can use a 38 special plus P 38 special regular in a 357 gun. That's that's the awesome part of having a 357, and but not vice versa. So don't be putting 357 shells in a 38 special, or you're liable to blow your your gun up and hurt yourself. <clears throat> I don't know. I've never actually met someone who tried that, but uh. I'm, I'm not going to be the dude to try it out. We picked ours up. The MSRP on this at 575 we got ours for around uh, 550 so it was about right on. Uh, the five-shot capacity, like I said again, and once again, for a concealed carry piece, shrouded hammer. Uh, what I like about this is it's not as rigid when it comes to the... the, uh, ten, or the uh, uh, the trigger trigger guard. You see, it's a smooth piece that will form form easier and not create as much as an outline where this you know uh like an l shape almost uh, shooting the shooting these i would much rather have this pistol right here with the trigger pull it has it's a it's a really nice trigger pull i'd rather have the ruger lcr in my hand shooting 38 specials than the air weight uh and I have shot 357 Magnum in this, and uh, hey, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't care for the kick compared to 38 Special. And if I can do close to the same job with the 38 Special, I'm going to use it. Uh, I do have a box of 357 Magnum, but you know, I really don't shoot them that much. That's kind of for like Judgment Day, you know. Um, and I disagree with people who say 38 Special won't do the job. I, I like to shoot 38 Special more, and I'm better at shooting 38 Special than I am 357. And if you're better, at sh if you can hit one-inch targets or one-inch groups at like 15, 20 feet, 25 feet with a 38 special, it doesn't matter if it's a 357 Magnum or a 38 special. You hit what you're aiming at, and you do your job correctly with what you have. I don't see a problem. Uh, that's kind of just my little uh, insight on that. Uh, I hear people all the time say this gun wants. N well, it's not going to do that because uh, it's not. You know the round's not powerful enough at this distance. Well, I'm not worried about the round being powerful enough with a snub nose 357 or a snub nose uh, 38 special because I should only be using this distance like across a room, and that's still pushing distance. This is meant, like I said, for across the table kind of stuff. Uh, so if you're looking for something that has more distance, I would go with a concealed carry pistol not a concealed carry revolver and if you're looking at uh, something that has smaller recoil and more capacity I would roll with the uh, like I said semi-automatic pistol and not a revolver uh, there's semi-automatic pistol not a revolver uh, my little insight for the evening if you have any questions about any of these guns, go ahead and send me a comment. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, we all we always appreciate more subscribers. You know, we're just kind of doing this as hobbies. Uh, just you know, showing, not saying showing off, but showing the uh, showing the stuff that we have and the different options that are out there. And if we can shoot and have some fun in between, you know, and buy and have excuses to go to the shooting range, uh, then we're more than more than happy to take them. You know, uh, like I said, message us, email us, comment us, friend us, subscribe us, pretty much do anything you want with us. Uh, but you guys, you guys have a good night. Keep it safe. Uh, be careful out there at the range. Be care even more careful concealing. Try and they call it in this state imprinting, I believe, when your concealed piece shows, and you can get in a lot of trouble for that. Uh, so be car be wary of that. Uh, and make sure that the gun fits you. Don't just buy a gun because someone tells you to. Uh, make sure that that gun is going to fit you properly or the person who's buying it. You're buying uh, your wife a gun, right? Say she's petite, 140 pounds, 130 pounds, 120 pounds, that range. That's the smaller woman range. Uh, 
Are you going to buy her a 357 Magnum to keep in her purse? Probably not. You know, you're going to roll with a 9mm Mac Raw, the 380, a 32, a 38 Special, uh, those, that kind of thing. Uh, now, someone who has experience with firearms, they shoot all the time, like a female who shoots all the time, and this goes for males too, they can start handling higher capacity, or not higher capacity, but higher, uh, oh, what am I thinking? I'm sorry. Uh, larger rounds, you know, uh, bigger guns, or smaller guns, or higher recoil firearms. That was the word I'm looking for. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, take that into aspect, or as an aspect of who's buying the gun or who's going to be using it more. Uh, but I'm going to sign off. I know I ranted a little bit tonight. I'm pretty tired, but uh, you guys have a great night. Be safe at the range, and you guys take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching.